Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Michael Maney begins now. Good evening everyone. With less than two weeks until state election, the promises are continuing to flow. Labor has proposed a shake-up to rent regulations with renters to gain greater power to make their house a home. The Liberals, meanwhile, have backed an audacious plan for a new tourism icon. There are few more comfortable duos than Tasmania's right. Liberal leader and a truck. Jeremy and the Chocolate Factory, the job of the day, pledging a sweet treat for an idea that goes back to the future. An opportunity where Tasmanians can make their own Tasmanian chocolate with Tasmanian ingredients. Committing $12 million to a planned $100 million visitor experience at the Cadbury factory. The big feature, the world's largest glass and a half chocolate fountain. Reignite something that was here before and build on it in today's world and deliver it in a way which will blow people's minds. Also aimed at providing a sugar hit to local tourism, like another nearby icon. This will be minor risk. Bringing chocolate lovers back to Cadbury is not new. Former PM Tony Abbott made a similar pledge 11 years ago, which never eventuated. Proponents confident of delivering a world class rather than a Glasgow Willy Wonka experience. It's happening. It's not, it was going to happen. It is happening. Labour backs the sweet tooth shrine, but want clarity about the cash splash. I think it's really important that when government's handing out taxpayer money, they do it transparently. Tasmanian taxpayer money is not the Liberal Party's plaything. As they pledged an overhaul of rental regulations. Among the changes, a crackdown on rent bidding, portable bonds and extra privacy rights. Renters would also be able to have pets, hang photos and create veggie gardens. So many Tasmanians are in the rental market, they deserve to have certainty and security. The portable bond welcomed by renter Sarah Miller. A recent move cost her thousands of dollars. I was unable to stay in my home, my previous home, and I had to come up with $3,500 um, to pay my bond for this home. And Prime Minister Anthony Albanese is rumoured to be in Tasmania tomorrow for the Labour campaign launch. The Liberals pressuring him to back the under-fire salmon industry. Who gets the chocolates in a fortnight's time stays up for grabs. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. The Greens have unveiled a plan to protect the endangered Magian skate if elected, adamant on ending salmon farming in the Macquarie Harbour. The party would help around 60 workers impacted find new employment by investing up to $5 million each year into the West Coast public sector. Financial assistance would also be available to people eager to gain new qualifications. It's uh, an opportunity for people to choose from a range of options that uh, would interest them and match their, their skills and, and abilities. Rockliffe says it's all about coexistence between the skate and salmon industry and has already invested $2 million in research and development. Tasmanian water babies have embraced today's cooler climate, spending their Sunday on the waves. A local surf school ranked best in country, helping students of all ages hone their skills on a board. Barrelling towards the waves, dozens of groms learning how to surf and loving every minute. The water makes me cold and I like being cold. We're learning like step ups and how to get up on the board and just catching waves better and not nose diving. Coast Rider Surf Academy, the top pick for breaking onto a board. Recently named 2023 Surf School of the Year at an awards night in Sydney. And there is... Coast Rider Surf yeah! Surfing Australia really looking at surf schools, delivering a pathway from starting at our surf junior program, working through to our board rider clubs, then into state competitions. John O's stellar team of coaches helping him soar to the top. And not only the ones that work this year, but the ones that have worked over the past 15 years. Their high level of service attracting people of all ages out to sea. For our surf groms, it's like 4 to 12. Um, and then we do joiner groups as well, which is more um, 12 onwards. So I think I've, ta I've taught a 75 year old before. So it's massive range. Ladies over 50 are the biggest um, uptake of surfing in Australia at the moment. So, um, and that, yeah, we're, we're very much with that as well. 
International university students also getting involved. It's quite exciting to get people together and meet some new friends. Reminding all Tasmanians it's never too late to learn a new skill. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. Labor has vowed to help reduce the barriers women face in securing employment if re-elected. The party committing $850,000 over five years to dress for success. The money would help the not-for-profit organisation set up retail outlet Shop for Success. That would provide work experience opportunities for women in our community, as well as providing pre-loved clothing at a discounted price. It also gives the ability for Dress for Success to gain a revenue stream that will continue to allow them to develop programs to support women back into work. More than 300 women accessed Dress for Success programs in the last financial year. A celebration of the Steam Age drew a large crowd of onlookers in Sheffield today for the annual Steam Fest exhibition. Now in its 30th year, the event captured the attention of both young and old. It was a return to a different period in time in Sheffield today when steam engines ruled. In the days when making hay while the sun shone or feeding hay into a chaff cutter was a fact of life and hard work was a given. Sheffield farmer Peter Rockcliffe remembers them well. Back in the 40s, there was only steam. It was in the 40s the first tractors came out. Many of the machines on show at Steam Fest date back to the 1800s. Some have been lovingly restored, like this one built in 1907. Coral Howe recalls farming with her husband, Eric, using steam-driven machinery passed down from his father. Well, his father was a, a contract, thrashing contractor, so he cut peas and oats and chaff and thrashed oats and other grains for you to be used commercially. Steam Fest is a celebration of the steam age, vintage machinery, railways and rural life in general, a time when community was integral to living a sustainable life. I overheard Peter talking about every farm that they went to, they'd sit around the dinner table after the day's work was done, so the community was very close-knit in those days. Steamfest also showcasing how to modify an old machine for today's use, like these drag tractors. Proving that reinvention is the mother of necessity. Melinda Ogden, 7 Tasmania News. Will Magnay will continue to call Tasmania home after signing a new deal with the Jack Jumpers. But in a big blow, Marcus Lee will miss tomorrow's must-win match after copping a suspension for an incident in Game 1. The team today taking aim at the league's review process. Two incidents, two different outcomes. Gary Brown was ejected after punching Aaron Beans in December, but was fined rather than suspended for the shocking incident. Fast forward to Friday, and Marcus Lee clashed with Jordan Usher. And he's not happy about it too. Oh, oh, oh. Jordan Usher made a beeline for Marcus Lee. Called unsportsmanlike, the referees didn't eject him. But Lee will now miss a game after a decision that's baffled fans and the team. Uh, you know, referees actually making the call on the court, but then it gets to some other person that's not basketball people that make decisions on things. In a stunning move, it's believed Perth asked for an incident review. Lee copped a two-game ban, reduced to one with an early guilty plea. While accepting the deal, the Jackies are furious with the league. Parity is what we all want, parity, and just a, and transparency in terms of the decisions made into it. I don't understand the process uh, uh, and the inconsistency of how it all works. Today, not all bad news. Will Magne confirmed he's staying in the nest for two more seasons. There's nowhere else I wanted to be. Uh, I had a quick brief of looking overseas and thought, no, that's, that, that's not for me. He loves it here. He's always said he's loved it here. I think he really loves the playing group more than anything else. Tomorrow's match is a win or season over scenario. The coach wants improved foul discipline, saying it played a role in Friday's narrow loss. They made 29 foul shots. It's one third of their scoring that came from the foul line with no one guarding them at the foul line. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. Reigning WSL champion South Hobart have started 2024 in style, defeating the Devonport Strikers to win the Summer Cup. 
Two first half goals were enough for the Reds to win the trophy. The strikers, however, had better luck in the men's decider. They defeated a determined Kingborough Lions 3-2 in an entertaining clash. Taylor Lass scored a double for the winners. The season proper kicks off next week. The Pirates have won Baseball Tasmania's Southern Series Grand Final against Athletics Green in Hobart by seven runs. The Pirates pitchers dominating on the mound with four no-run innings. While the A's fielding had a tough outing, giving up four runs to the Pirates in a half inning. Good evening. It was another warm day across our island state today. The top recorded on Flinders Island with the mercury climbing to 33 degrees. Hobart 21, 10 degrees warmer in Launceston with 31, Devonport 25 and Burnie 27. Further out, Friendly Beach is 28, Wynyard and St Helens 27, King Island and Ouse both 26, Lyweenie 25, Grove and Lowhead 23, Mariah Island 21, Strawn the state's low with 17 degrees today. The satellite shows extensive mid to high level cloud over Tasmania with an isolated thunderstorm brewing about the east. A mid to high level cloud band originating from inland WA will move into the bite and then across the remainder of the state. A high lies over the southern Tasman Sea projecting a ridge over eastern states, a trough runs over the tropics and coastal parts of WA. East to northeasterly winds tend to 20 knots, shifting north to northwesterly in the afternoon. Southwesterly swells building up to 4.5 metres in the south and 4 metres in the west. A strong wind warning has been issued for coastal waters between Tasman Island to Low Rocky Point. Showers expected towards the south tomorrow, Hobart 27, Dover 26, Ouse 31. Partly cloudy conditions continue in the north, Launceston 31, Devonport 26, Scottsdale 29. Cloudy in Burnie and Stanley 24, increasing showers in Strawn 28. A bit of cloud for St Helens 27, much the same for Swansea 28, Ross 30 degrees. Now, as we head back to the office on Tuesday, we can expect showers about the west and south extending statewide during the morning and clearing in the afternoon. Mid to low 20s likely on Wednesday with showers about the northwest extending to the remainder of the north in the afternoon. Thursday cooling down a little with showers likely, particularly about the northeast. We'll take a look now at mainland conditions for your Monday. Adelaide, the nation's top tomorrow, with a hot and sunny 38. Also warm in Melbourne, 37. 31 for Perth, Cairns and Darwin. 29 and a shower or two for Brisbane. Some much needed rain has arrived across the state. Hobart currently 16, Launceston 25, Devonport 22. Another perfect day across the state, Michael. Now enjoy the public holiday tomorrow and with conditions changing this evening, please remember to stay safe on our roads. Very good advice, Kaya, thanks for that. Well, that's all your news for now. Thanks for joining us from all the team here. Good night.